Today we'll be taking a quick look at a new EDC blade I've been carrying for the last couple of weeks. This knife was sent to me by Jared over at Neves Knives. Be sure to go check him out. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. First, the Kaiser Drop Bear comes in a handful of different variations with different scale material and different steels. This variation is the fat carbon scale, we'll get to this in a second, in S35VN steel combination. I do like it in a lot of areas, but there's a couple areas I'd improve. But first, let's get to the specs. Closed height and closed length. Width, not including pocket clip. Blade length and overall length. Spine thickness. Behind the edge thickness. Weight, 3.35 ounce or 95 grams. Fifty-eight and a half. Well, fifty-eight and a half ain't good. Thing is, is I tested this six times, and I got fifty-eight and a half every single time except for one, and I got fifty-nine. So this thing is at fifty-eight and a half, and I can't wait till all of the comments come in saying that the coating affected the hardness reading, and without the coating, it would have scored sixty-three. Uh, so more on this in a minute. 58 and a half, but it's not all bad. I did do some completely non-scientific edge retention testing by cutting up a random amount of cardboard and seeing if it would still shave in. Now having never used and being completely unfamiliar with S35VN, I did a little bit of research on it. And I came to the conclusion that S35VN is basically just a slightly tougher version of S30V with slightly less edge retention. And will you actually be able to tell the difference between S35VN and S30V in the real world? Absolutely not. There you go. That's all you need to know. <laughs> it's the same thing with knife steels. It's like, is there, is there really that much of a difference <laughs> yeah. between, you know, uh, I, I don't even know. I don't even know an example. Like S35VN and S30V maybe? Between the, between this steel and this steel, and this, is your like if a non knife person were to cut with both uh, both of them, would they be able they to would. tell right off the bat? Probably not. I mean, nope. maybe if you were looking at the two extremes between like a dollar store knife and yeah. Rex One Twenty One or something like that. Yeah. Well, I know but, I did notice a huge difference when I was doing construction. Um, I would go and I would buy just like cheap Smith and Wesson knives, knives for fifteen dollars. Yeah. Knives, yeah. yeah. Well, then eventually I wound up getting a good Kershaw. Yeah. And I believe it was in 14C28N. This was years ago. And that was the first time I had gotten, you know, a really good quality steel. Yeah, an actual on, knife. On a folding knife that was, yeah. uh, that was good. And I noticed it right away, but only because the knives that I was using previously were so shit yeah. that, I mean, they just, they go dull. As soon as you use them, half of them, you know, like the edges are so burnt and the steels are so compromised from the heat treatment that yeah. was put on. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I would love to have this steel a little bit harder, but does it make the difference between me getting a job done and me not getting a job done? Uh, the answer is no. I can go an entire day without needing to sharpen this. I can go two days without needing to sharpen this, but if I cut through a piece of sandpaper, it's not gonna last that long. This is one of the best edge retention steels that I have. And there's other aspects as to what makes a knife a good knife. It's not all about the steel. Other factors that make a knife good are also important as well. I mean, what if this was just a solid block of Rex 121 at 73 HRC? Does that make this a good knife? Well, it'll be a solid block. No, just because your knife uses absolute top of the line premium materials, doesn't necessarily make it a good knife. The fat carbon scales, and don't ask me what fat carbon is, I have no clue, their words, not mine, feel nice in the hand and are finished nicely. Blade centering is great. We have a nice thin blade stock and what I would call a high saber grind. The thumb stud feels nice, not overly sharp or irritating. It also indexes nice in the hand when pulled out of the pocket. And it has a nice deep carry, ambidextrous, tip up carry pocket clip. I'm sure I'm missing a few things here, but overall, everything else about this knife is great. Except for one thing. The open and closing, the action on this knife is not great. 
it's absolutely amazing. It's top of the line, in my opinion. But am I willing to put up with slightly soft, a lot soft blade steel for an amazing action? Kaiser calls this a clutch lock. Now, I am not a knife blade lock expert, but this looks like an axis lock to me. And I don't know who owns the patents, if there are any, what the subtle differences are between these and other locks of similar design, etc. The last time I drove into patent and design issues slash info, I almost caused an international incident. So I'm just going to show you how it works. I mean, the action on this knife is simply amazing. And I've been carrying it the past couple of weeks for that very reason. The problem is, would I like this knife to be at 61 to 62 HRC? You bet. If they brought the hardness up to that, it would be hard to beat for the price. With that being said, it sharpens very well and seems to deburr pretty easily. So I didn't have much trouble getting this to Harewood Lean Sharp. That's something that can't be said about some other CPM steels at lower hardness readings. The S110V won't let me be or let me be me without a burr, you see. S35VN sharpens nicely and polishes well. I think this is one of those things where you simply can't have everything. There's always going to be a compromise with something. The problem here is that the compromises that we're making is with price. This knife retails for 160, around 160, dollars. They also make other versions of this with other premium materials that are north of $170. They make lesser versions of this with lower quality materials, anywhere from $110 to $120. So there's lots of variations of this knife. Now this knife in particular, this is a premium version with premium materials. We've got the carbon blade scales, as well as the S35VN premium blade steel. The problem is that half of those premium materials are not done correctly. And in my opinion, there's zero excuse for this blade to come out of the factory at 58.5 HRC. So essentially what you're paying for here are some carbon scales and some below average blade material. The other problem with this knife is that knives like this exist. This is the Volsteed Raccoon in 14C28N. I ruck well tested this blade at 60.5 HRC. Now this is not a premium blade steel, but this is a $60 knife. The action, in my opinion, is about 90% as good as the Kaiser Drop Bear for half the price of the lower versions of the Drop Bear. Now, is this knife absolutely perfect? No, there are some design things that I would change to make it a little bit closer to this knife in terms of action. The Drop Bear does feel like a more quality knife, but, we're talking about three times the price here or twice the price for the lower quality versions of the Drop Bear. At $60, I think this is an amazing value. And at 60.5 HRC, it seems like it's coming out of the factory done correctly. Even in the pocket, it comes out of the pocket and goes back into the pocket almost just as fast. Again, we, we may be talking about 90% here of what the Kaiser Drop Bear is. Is the action 100% of what the drop bear is? No, but again, $60 versus $160 or $60 versus $120 for the lower end versions. I'll leave the decision up to you. I really don't want to do this. I don't want to, but we all know I have to. Oh, it's like a death. Why? Why you guys make me do this stuff? Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Point five.